not sure what season you guys are in. I mean, we're in the summer season. You know, this is our happy place. You know, a time when people get away and, um, and replenish and, you know, rebuild their lives, right? Or at least pull back from the, the rat race that we, that we can be consumed with. But, but sometimes you can do that and, and not find that it made any difference in your life. And you can sometimes begin to compare your life to other people's lives and their happy place and looking at that and going, well, man, if, if I had that, then I'd be happy. You know, it's, it's funny how confusing the enemy can be. You know, when we, when we live in a country where there's so many opportunities and we're, we're above, you know, the, the, cost, the cost of living, but the, the, the quality of life here is, is amazing, yet we can still feel without you know, and that, dis- that distraction. So I'm, I'm trusting that today, somehow in this message, because this has been on my heart a lot, this message, because I mean, I'm getting, we get on in years and you start to think, hmm, you know what? I, I kind of thought I'd be in a different place now. You know, and, and it's like the time for making it to that place in the future is becoming shorter as you get older, right? It's like, okay, so when am I gonna, when am I gonna be in my happy place? One, I believe when I finally do get home to see the Lord. And I've said that to many of you guys. I told this story over and over again. But when we got back from Haiti and that earthquake, um, like it was like winning a lottery to me. I was like, wow, I'm still alive. And I'm in this amazing country. And we had this huge welcoming committee at the airport because it was all over the news that many people were coming back to the Calgary airport that were just came through this earthquake where 300 and some thousand people perished. And I remember going, wow, God, you were so good. I'm so happy to be here. And he goes, I'm home. And he goes, you know, you're not home yet. And he said, wait till that reception. <laughs> this pales in comparison to what, when you truly get to the, your home, the true happy place where there's no more tears, no more pain. You know, it, it's almost like we forget about that. And in, in even in our, in our faith journey, we kind of forget because we have, a, we have a job to do here. You know, we're called to lead others to discover that, that life. And that's kind of what my message is today. You know, because I was trying to think of a happy place. You guys want to shout out what you think my happy place is? Anybody think they know me? Backyard. Backyard, see, glory. I got that a lot in Claire's home, too. Motorcycle. My motorcycle, yeah. Any else? Oh, Cindy. <laughs> you stole my punchline, hon. Uh, maybe my Camaro, right? I got a nice car. I love it. It's my end-of-life car. People say, oh, your midlife crisis. No, that's my end-of-life. If I can still get out of that thing... In 15 years from now, I'm in good shape because I might need a hoist because it's quite low. But it, it's true. You know, I began thinking about it. I was like, I don't know. I've, I've, I go places and then it's, it, we go back to normal life. I really, truly is, is, what, is beside Cindy. You know, aw. <laughs> See, she already stole that from me, so I can't. Because often I, I don't throw her under the bus, so to speak, but I do point out some of her you know, qualities. <laughs> See, <laughs> you guys know, please don't rip. <laughs> that makes you guys look good, though, right? When I look like a fool, then the other guys go, see, I wasn't like Pastor Ralph, at least. But it's true. Like I, but, but, then, but then what about putting my dependence on, on her? You know, we've known people that have lost their spouses. Does that mean they no longer have happiness? You know, is, is, it, is, my, is my outcome in life and is, is my success in life and my happiness in life is it dependent on the things around me including my wife because we'll put those expectations well and sometimes people go well I'll be happy when I get rid of that one and get this one right or because or in my circumstances you know when I get here or when I get that kind of like what I told you guys when I get this job I'll be happy but how many of you were so glad when you first got your job right wow I got a new job and then three months later it's like oh man I need a new job (laughs) Right? Because it can diminish over time. And, and again, we're putting our expectations on this happiness. And I'm not knocking guys that were like saying it's on the road or camping or Pastor Brian with his motorcycle and, and those things. So yeah, that's, that's a bit of an escape. But that, if that's the only place that we're truly happy, are we, or do you think we're missing out on life? And I truly think we are. Because if, again, we become dependent on, on those things. And yet, and even in my own relationship, my happy place is beside Cindy, unless we're in Safeway. Because I'm that hunter. Like, I want to find, hey, this is like 
six cents cheaper, and it doesn't have the name brand. And she's like, let's just get this done. I'm not bringing you. They say it's like hunting with a game warden. You know, shopping with me is like hunting with a game warden. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to. So, so even in our relationship, even though we're together and we're supposedly in our happy place, there's places that is, there's a tension because we have difference of opinions about feelings. And I'm telling you, when you have those feelings, they're not always accurate to your situation. So if you're not happy right now, or you're in something, it's, it's, it's where you are, not who you are. And I'm trusting that I'll be able to help you discover what God has said to us about finding our happy place or finding happiness and, and fulfillment in this life because it's a broken world. Like there's so many people displaced. We have uh, Pastor Kirby Lockhart, the guy who hired me. So if you're complaining about this thing, catch him in the next service and say, why did you do that? But he'll be here in the second service. But his whole family, they're all displaced and at his house. So he's at our house going, <laughs> This is nice. <laughs> but man, there's people going through terrible things. Is there happiness in that? I wonder if there is. I love the story about Nelson Mandela. I don't know, I've probably told you this before too. Nelson Mandela, when he was in prison and getting beaten by his guards, he said, I always wanted to look them in the eyes. And I was like, why? Because he said, every time I saw a little bit of good. And I'm like, wow. He's looking for that happy place, even amongst being beaten and persecuted, he's going, there's some good in here, that mustard seed of faith, that mustard seed of goodness in a broken world. And I think that's where God goes, okay, you, you're starting to get it. Or what do we do sometimes? What, what do you do when you first wake up in the morning? Do you think, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that? Or I have this problem. You know, I, I do that sometimes if I wake up at nighttime, I'm like, oh man, I got this and that. But you've been told that if, if you can think of 10 things you're thankful for before you go to bed, you sleep better, you rest better, because your focus, again, God asks us to go, what are you thankful for? It changes those circumstances to where, to where they are because we have a relationship with God. And he can speak to us in those times and say, look, look what you have. It's amazing. And again, there's people looking at your life right now that said, if I had what you had, I'd be happy. And yet, where are you? Are you there? Do you recognize it? You know, we don't want to rub it in people's faces. That's what we do on vacation, right? A little bit. I mean, I, I, yeah, Ralph rubbed it in your faces. I was in Mexico, and I said I was at Park Lake. <laughs> Big waves crashing behind me. Oh, we're out here at Park Lake. We're so humble. But you do that, right? Because you're like, wow, you want to celebrate it. But again, that's, that's only temporary. Cindy and I were fortunate enough in Mexico to have all-inclusive paradise everything you can eat, anything on the menu. And this is a, like, there's five restaurants or six restaurants in this place. One was a five diamond, so top quality chefs. You know, I try, I'm going to try that appetizer because it's included and it's like $30, but I'm going to have those two, whatever they were, oysters and everything, right? But I tell you, after day four, we're like looking at the menu, me, you know, I don't know. Is there any grilled cheese? <laughs> Got craft dinner. It's like, no, we have macaroni, El whatever, El Mexico. And it was like, okay, it's funny, again, that, that, that these things on this life are so temporary, you guys. They're so temporary. So don't look at where you are right now and, and what you have as being unsatisfied because even the ones who have it all are not satisfied. If, if you look at um, millionaires, people that win the lottery, and I guess the guy in Lethbridge won 55 million. If you're watching... We could use some backpacks at my city care. <laughs> Mere 20 grand would help thousands of kids. They'd all get iPods and iPhones and yeah. with your generosity. But they say after a few months of winning those lotteries, it's, it's normal. It becomes normal. Can you imagine, right? You're thinking like, well, it'd sure be a lot better normal, but, but honestly, often they, they lose everything because they have to keep getting something new. Like that brand new Ferrari they got pretty soon is dirty and and it's dusty and maybe it's mechanic and you think well there's something else so even with millions and millions of dollars we're thinking well that has got to be a happy place it's not and there's something they call that they call there's a word for it and i'm going to get all jordan peterson on you um hedonist hedonic adaptation it's it's a term that they use and they also call it the hedonic treadmill I'm just going to read right It's called the treadmill because it suggests that people are constantly striving for greater happiness and trying to escape negative emotions 
but they lead to a temporary boost falling by baseline level. That's what I've been telling you. You could be looking for your happy place, but you're going to eventually come back to a level. So that state of mind, I believe, is where we need to have a state of gratitude. This is it, man. This is good. You know, I, and I've, I've said this in my marriage, I said to Cindy, because, you know, when you look at things and you're going, wow, because, again, we hoped we'd be in different situations, finances and everything, you know, the motorhome, the cabin, the lake, the boat, all those things. It's like, I don't, I got, not, not complaining, but you, when you don't get that, it's like, okay, you're going to ruin your whole life looking on those dreams. Hedonic adaptation has implications very aspects of your life. Our consumer behaviors are based on it, because when I buy this and if I can buy that, it's kind of a rush. Like, you know, if you have to buy shoes all the time, there you go. Just did it. <laughs> Just did it. Okay. I'm Ralph, and I poke fun at my, Ralph's, my wife's giftings. Um, relationships. We see that, and people, they, start, they begin to compare with others and what their husband does or their wife does, and you start to focus on things that you don't have instead of being thankful for the things that you do. Churches. You know, we, we quite often will get suggestions from people, oh, our church should do this. And it's like, oh, okay, what are you saying? <laughs> are you saying you're not happy with what we're doing? Or is it that going to make you happy? Because there's a million different ways that we can minister as a church and reach people. And the truth is, if we're not impacting our community, something else will happen. They'll, they'll just think we're a bunch of hypocrites. So I can get that. Preachers. After a while, you lose. And I want to just touch on Pastor Kelly and Joy Lynn. What a gift they are. Right? Because I tell you, in their absence, in their absence over these few months, everything's good, but everybody felt a bit of the weight of that responsibility of leading this church. Everybody did. So pray for them. Pray for us. Because there, there there's more to what we're doing at Parallel Church than what we see here. And having a great service, and wow, it's cool, because even that will wane after a while. And we see it, people like, oh, I love this church, and everything, like, oh, what are you doing to participate? Mm, I don't know, I'm busy, and this and that. It's like, okay. But to get involved gives you a sense of purpose, and to enjoy that gratitude, because, man, I got to make an impact on somebody's life. That's why we do what we do. That's why it's love and impact. It was just like, great service, great music, great this, great preaching. It won't be long. You'll be like, mm. So if you're a guest here today, Pastor Kelly and Joylyn Steckler are our lead pastors. They're away on a sabbatical this time, but stick around. Come back for them because they're an amazing gift to this congregation. Get a little bit emotional on that. Could gratitude and happiness be linked is what I'm trying to get at here. Could they be linked? Is there something to do with being grateful that pulls us into a certain direction in our life to a, to a state of happiness? Could it be? Because otherwise, again, like I said, you begin to compare alternatives, have higher expectations on people. We shift our priorities, give more attention to another area, and one value depreciates. First Thessalonians 5. That's a tough one, Thessal Thessalonians 5, 18. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. It should be a scripture there. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why, why, why would we give thanks in all circumstances? That's the last thing I do when I'm meeting somebody who's going through a terrible grief situation. Well, there's something you can give thanks for in this. No. They look at you like you're nuts. I'll never be back here again because how could you dare say that I can find thanks in my situation? I'm not saying that. But even as Tim prayed, I love the way he prayed because he said, you'll look back and go, oh, but God in there. Wow, could have, what, what would happen if I didn't have a relationship with God? And if you're here today and you have no relationship with God, you're, you don't know about this religion or what you think we all believe, I'd encourage you to lean into that. Take a chance on that. Explore it, even just with a portion of your heart. Because even in those circumstances, he's asking us to give thanks. Could it be something healthy for our emotional health? Could there be something physically at attached to that? And I think that was me. I think, my, I don't know if I told you guys here online, I did, for, I got Apple Watch, right? So it kind of tracks you. For the first time on vacation, even though we were going through difficult things, which we always do, it said, hey, your resting heart rate dropped by 10 beats. And I'm like, wow, because you know what? Cindy and I, we really focused on what we were thankful for. We, we left our problems behind and says, wow, this is such a good space. Of course, it was in Mexico, but... 
But no, it's, it wasn't that. It was, it, was, it was like we had to purposely make that choice to do that. Because otherwise we would default back to our struggles. So what happens when we don't express gratitude? Even though we feel it, we might feel gratitude for situations and people and circumstances around us. We might feel it. But if we don't express it, the opposite happens to those around us. So you, you could be here to say, oh, I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for this. If you're not expressing it, people are going to wonder. The void with no gratitude expressed is depreciation. I was going to touch on the car for a bit. I, li I like my car. I've always been a car guy. But I show appreciation for it by cleaning it, taking care of it. And you think, well, that's kind of vain. No, but it, it's like, it's a gift that I have. And I, man, I better show it some value. If I just let it come into disarray. Are there areas in your life that are in disarray because you're not giving any attention to them? And if you did, that area would be lifted up. And that would be the expression of gratitude to that. I'm so thankful for my house. You clean it. How many guys clean their car and it runs better? I don't mind us. It's like, wow, this thing's running great. I was going to need a new engine. I just had to wash it. <laughs> man, it was dirty. <laughs> But there's something to that, you guys. Because if you think that, you go, wow. All of a sudden, you have this appreciation rather than depreciation. So if you neglect to be grat show gratitude, the opposite happens, even if you feel it. Have you ever been accused of being ungrateful? Someone says, oh, you're not very thankful. Or you're maybe in a relationship with somebody. Man, you get really defensive. Because you're saying, sure, I'm, I'm so happy about this. And... I know a couple that have had those conversations. They're married over 40 years, and they still, at 40 years, still have that expression. You say, this is what, you don't feel this. And it's like, it's because they told you you don't feel it. But really, they're telling you that that's what they feel. <laughs> so they're not wrong. It's just that void is often filled with negative feelings. Unless you express it. You can think you're happy. You can think you're thankful for your wife. You can think you're thankful for your kids. If you never tell them or do any acts of service towards them to help them feel that, the opposite's going to happen. And here's the thing, too. If, if you were to hold the door open for somebody and they just walk through, what's the first thing you think? <laughs> they might have just been distracted. They might feel, oh, thank you. I'm so busy. Yeah, I got in. You're thinking, oh, man, what a jerk. Just walk right through. Didn't say thanks or nothing. You're less likely to hold the door open the next time. So by that person expressing a little bit of gratitude in their life, if they walked in a spirit of gratitude, what do you think is going to come around them? Even so, they're going to be looking at the best situation every time they face. And I'll bet you that the next person, they see that person coming again, they're going, I'm going to hold the door because, man, they sure are thankful. That's what we thank our volunteers every team meeting. Every Sunday morning, we get together as a team meeting. We go, man, we are so thankful because alongside pastoring this church, there's we, a group of five or some people, one person on the platform is not going to have an impact on three or 4,000 people that call Parallel Home. We wouldn't. It's you guys participating in that, showing your gratitude, expressing it by serving and communicating what God is like to other people. They capture it. So the truth is, when you don't express it, they really don't know how you feel, but they do know how they feel. So just embrace it and go, okay, there's a chance I can still say thank, thanks to them. And that's usually where the arguments come. What we feel on the inside, if it's not expressed, will have no impact on those around us. And that's where it comes to the church. Parallel church can say, wow, we love and impact our community. But if there's not one bit of evidence... And you hear it. You hear it sometimes in the news when other churches are building large facilities and they go, all oh, those guys, it's just a private club. They're just, they never help. They only help their own. They might be thinking, every single person in those churches might be thinking, we really love our community, but the community without that expression thinks the exact opposite about them. And we do not want to be that in our community. We need to be a place where people go, they are making a difference. They, they may not make it all the time, but they are making a difference. Because the void is filled with the opposite of it. We can love it and feel it, and we'll be confused by why people say, I don't want to be a part of that place. No way, man. I know what you guys are about. Judging this, judging that. No, we love all. And this is how we do it. Have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? Yeah, man, if we don't wave a big banner, that's us. But it's like, yeah, those are impacts, man. Do you want to be involved in that? It's the most rewarding thing. Like I say, when we do the shopping for Shop of Wonders and you got a cart full of toys and people go, what's that about? What are you guys doing, man? How many kids you got? It's like, oh, man, this is for Shop of Wonders, this thing. They just, they open their wallets. Here, 
I want to be a part. They want to hang out with you a bit shopping. Like, this is the coolest thing. Gratitude for our community. Expressing it through love. Acts of love. I want to show you guys in the, in the scripture. I'm going to pull up a scripture here. Who would have known? But uh, that shows about the importance of giving thanks. It's in Luke. Luke 17, 11 to 17. It says, Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. And there's so much in this scripture, I'm just going to touch a little bit on it. But Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus was traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They have likely had never seen Jesus, but they likely have known of his reputation. If we can get the reputation of what Jesus is like in our community, these doors are going to be wide open for people to come in here and go, I've got to find this master guy because I've, I've got something in my life that's dying. I've got something in my life that's broken and hurting, and I haven't got an answer for it. That's what people with leprosy are. They're basically walking dead people. Now, that's a strong thing to say about people outside this community of church, but there's many people not even knowing what their spiritual life is because they've never come in contact with anything like that. But leprosy, there's one thing about it is um, they're walking dead people and then their bodies, they don't feel pain, I understand. So it, the high labor and, and stuff just to make a living and to live back then, they were just, they'd wear their bodies out not even knowing or experiencing pain. And that's what we say that like, no perfect people, but this is a, a world where people are going to experience pain. But for the hope of Jesus, these guys had no hope without him. They, they, they were excluded from society. They were, they were confined into a culture where they had to put their differences aside. So there'd be different faith groups in, in, the, in the leper colony. There'd be different statuses of finances and everything because of the situation they would be in with leprosy. They were forced and confined into this separate thing, aside from the rest of the community, aside from uh, society with no hope, only looking forward to a life that's going to diminish. Talk about finding a happy place in there. I doubt it. What a challenge that would be. We need pain in our lives to show physical limits and emotional limits. Now, that's why we don't necessarily have to preach to people about sin or what they're doing wrong because people have asked that as a pastor. Go, when are you going to talk about sin? It's like, man, I think the people experiencing it are feeling the pain of it. I don't need to remind them of that pain. Right? They're already suffering. We want to be a solution to that pain with a relationship with Jesus. Not accentuate what they're suffering. Well, yeah, well, you should have known. Yeah, we would have told you. Meanwhile, in our own life, we're deteriorating on the inside. Because we're putting our focus on, on us being elevated above them from that pain that they're experiencing. We don't need to remind people of the pain of sin. That's going to do that. Can you find gratitude in pain? You can. I believe you can. The lepers were totally isolated, except for other lepers, often because of diversity. People need each other. And you'll see that in a community. You'll find groups in our community coming together, banding together because the church isn't there for them. And those are opportunities for our church to somehow break into those communities and say, we love you just the way you are. And you can change. There can be a change in your life. Will there be less pain than what you're, what you're experiencing? They stood at a distance and shouted, Master, meaning they had heard about Jesus from his reputation. And yet they still felt their segregation and they had to stay separate from them. Verse 14, he says, when he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. This is a powerful passage. Because they would have been, can you imagine your, 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 your life is in total disarray? And Jesus tells you, go show yourself to the most religious, judgmental people in society that you're healed. Now, we pray all the time about situations, and, and, it, and honestly, with me, it's, di it's difficult because I'll pray for situations for an answer for cancer or something like that, and I know there's people in our congregation that lost loved ones to it. Because you're like pointing out something that just might not happen in their situation. But Jesus still asked these guys. He said, before you experience any change, he says, as they went, so they had to take a few steps. I'm wondering how far, how many, how far they walked with their leprosy before they had enough confidence to face that one. 
That's why we respond with so much grace when people are in trouble. With so much grace, we just say, if you just turn and you walk this way, you're healed. You watch. You just turn and walk this way. Go show yourself to the most religious person. Jesus said, you're healed. So I was curious to see. How, I wonder how far. I wonder if it was like the last 10 feet. They go, well, here goes nothing. We're going to be rejected. Off to the colony again. We're all lepers. We're all a mess. Our lives are falling apart. No pun intended. <laughs> inappropriate. Inappropriate. Sorry. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Again, Pastor Kelly, be back. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Blame Kirby. <laughs> so one of them, this is the cool part, and I'll be closing soon. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Again, he would have felt discrimination on so many levels. But one encounter with Jesus changed everything for him physically, emotionally, and he, he couldn't help but say thank you. And that's why when we continue to reach people in disarray of life, that's why anything short of sin to reach people, no matter what they're going through, Jesus has a solution for that. If they would just come to him, our hope is in, because we're like going, these guys are messed up. I don't know. I don't know, but this one, my heart always goes, no, but. <laughs> you should have seen me, man, when I staggered in here before this building was built. We were in a cabaret the night before, our lives probably not going in the right direction, beginning to fall apart in our marriage relationship because of the environments we were in, the company that we kept. But that was a little community, the party community was all friends, all letting their lives just fall apart until we hear this Jesus story. And we go, I don't get all the hand raising, I don't know all the expression of what gratitude, but there's something about this Jesus that's telling me I need to change. That if I trust him, and just turn, everything changes in my life. And again, Luke highlighted again that Jesus' encounter with outsiders, time and time again, they were the ones who expressed the most gratitude. That's why I love reaching on church people. Because we in our, can kind of go off and we can just be normal about what we get to experience each week in church and we can just slip back to, oh, praise God. But when you come with all kind of brokenness in your life and experience a relationship with God and what he can do, there is so much. They have to tell others. That's why we must, must continue to reach people with this gospel message. To help people discover a place that is much happier than going without him. And then Jesus said, this is kind of stinging, this kind of hurts. He says, Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? No one has returned to give praise to God except for this foreigner, and then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Basically pointing out, if you continue to have this attitude, you're going to continue to walk in this place of happiness. No matter what you face, because you know where you were and where he's going to take you, you can continue to walk. The other ones, I'm not sure. I think there may be a possibility that their lack of gratitude would continue to spiral downward again. That after a certain period of time, their physical body being made well would make them go back, and who knows what they would have been doing. But he made an example of this situation to go, you must remain thankful to walk in the love of God, knowing that every day, every step you take is ordained and called by him to love others. And that is the most rewarding happiness that you can ever experience. Because you're having, having people get a small glimpse of what a relationship with God is. We communicate and demonstrate what God was like and Jesus is like. That's, what, that's our job as a church, to communicate and demonstrate what he's, what he's like. And when I see these situations, the most outcasts in society were welcomed and, 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 and changed, and even though they didn't change right away, I can't tell you how many people I've, I've had say, well, they aren't even changing. You know, we're going here, we're going there. There's no one's, that guy's still doing this. I'm like, man, what about your life? Because some people would ask, when are you going to tell them about sin? When are you going to tell them about their pain? I get so mad. I'm so passionate about what we get to do. Jesus is making a stinging observation I think we need to pay attention to. Three things before my takeaway. You guys will be on your way to, I guess it's carrots or something on there outside. Three things. Unexpressed gratitude, gratitude will feel like ingratitude, regardless of how others feel. Meaning if we don't express it, the opposite happens. Just know it. If you don't express it, start being more thankful. 
Start telling people thanks. Man, you're such a gift. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Man, as a pastor, I'm like, wow. And please don't come up. Everyone go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that's not what my point is here. But it's like you feel good. It draws more out of people. They're like, wow, I'm going to give more. I'm going to do more because, wow, look at that cycle that we've got going here. Look at that, that momentum that we have. We want to keep that up. And gratitude is so important to that. Number two, ingratitude feels like rejection. If we're not thankful for the people coming in here, they will feel rejected. And they will know it. Every word we say, every action we do should say, you are welcome and you are loved and you are wanted here. And we are so thankful that you're here. Because one false glance, without the expression, is going to scream, I'm not accepted. They don't care for me here. I, already, I knew that this place would be like that. Number three, unexpressed gratitude could suggest a huge ego. Meaning that if we, if we keep celebrating other people, does that kind of say that, does that take away, do you feel that way about yourself? You know, if I just, like again, I love Pastor Tim. It's got, it's got nothing to do with my ego. It's recognizing and being thankful for a gift to somebody else. But if I was like, no, I'm not going to point that out at him. I'm not going to be thankful for that. Could it be suggesting that there's an insecurity in me about what God has put into my life and the gifts that he's, and I'm not even thankful for them because I have to protect them. I have to put others down. I have to let others suffer without even knowing how, how much we experience and love them. Could it be that it means that we have too much, we think too highly of ourselves to give thanks to others? That's where the humility of following God is. It's like, oh man, I'm, I'm only here because of him. <laughs> Anything you get out of me that's good was from him. And I give thanks to him every week. Today's takeaway, gratitude can lead us to find our happy place. I truly believe that. That if, if we are inspired enough today to go outside these walls and continually thank others, our employer, watch all of a sudden your employer go, wow, I was thankful for that overtime. And man, he's, gonna, he's so grateful. He's like, I'm going to give him overtime again. Can you see it? It's what happens. It's, it's, it's not like we're looking for the blessing, but is there, is there something in that gratitude for others that draws them? And it's not about getting. It's, it's like getting people into a cycle, what God has said all along. Give thanks. Where's the other nine? Where are they? Did they not see? Let's not be a church of the nine. <laughs> Let's be a church of the one that says thank you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for, God, we just give thanks. God, when there's, when there's not words that we can say, Lord, as even as we're going to go into this song, this is, there's not words that we can even say, God, but there's actions that we can do for this community. There's actions of checking in on people and, and letting them know we're thankful that we even have a relation and a connection with them. God, those people that have friends and, and family, Lord, that are far from you and maybe don't even have what, nothing to do with you, Lord, I just thank you, God, that, that we have that connection with them, that these individuals in our congregation have that connection, and, and God, you're going to equip them that those people will feel that gratitude for even where they are, just like the lepers, even where they are, go, go see the priests. I have made you well, God, that they would just get that revelation from our simplicity, God, no matter how much theology we have. God, that simple one that just, that just loves others. And we thank you, for, thank you for that, God, that today we're changed. We go out of here different because of your love, your word, your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next most important thing is, is that relationship with God. I, 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 I can... I, I always get emotional when I'm talking about this because I, I don't know where we'd be. If somebody wouldn't have reached out. And when we came here, not even in this building, there was a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of love. It was all around us. You cannot reject it. I was like, I need that. If you're here today and anything I've said has resonated with you, just maybe, just maybe that's God telling you he loves you and he wants you to explore him. 
his truth. And as you begin, you might think, I'm still a mess. But as you take a step, just like the lepers, I don't know how far, I don't remember how long I followed, began to follow God before I noticed change in my life or, or even just be able to feel like he's real and he's there. I want to say a prayer with you guys. Just pray along with me. And this is what we did. We just said, and talks in Romans, confess that he's Lord. And you kinda, it's kind of like taking that step. <laughs> Except this towards him. You guys pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God. I believe that you died and rose again. I ask you to become my Lord, my God, my Savior. God, I am so thankful, but by your word, all our sins are forgiven. All of them are gone. We give you our hearts today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, I can look around and, and, and I can have you guys wave at us and go, hey, yeah, man, it was me. And not to embarrass you, if you want to do that, that's fine, but I'd really love for you just to write it on a card. There's a card in the seat pocket there that says, yeah, I made this decision today. And it's not that we track you down, but, but if there's any question you have about this journey or, or we can say this was the day <laughs> that they began to turn, that, that they trusted enough from a guy who sometimes says inappropriate things, but still expressed that there's a God who loves you. Fill it out. We have, we have a Bible at the next steps table there. If, if you're totally out of any kind of context with God, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll help you with that and not hassle you about it. I, I challenge you to do that as one of your steps today to fill out that card. And now another thing I'd ask even today, because we're going to go back into that song, I'm going to get you guys to stand. And maybe you're here today and you've just kind of lost a passion for what we do as a church or lost a passion for even serving God and and, and maybe it's a relational situation that you're experiencing. You've, you've lost that thankfulness for it. Even now, I challenge you to lift your hands if it says it doesn't, it's nothing. It's just, a, it's an expression. I can't even sing this song, to tell you the truth. Every time I sing my, I have no words. I'm, like, I'm a mess because I know what God's done for me. I would challenge you to do that today see what he does in your heart. See what, what that draws to you in your circumstances this week. 